EA Sports. It's in the game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week four, and it's like we're playing a whole new game. Um, the revamp team obviously has updated the entire graphics package for the game. And I gotta say, I'm blown away. This is incredible. It, it feels like I'm playing uh, NCA 21. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this week, though. So playing our brand new game let's go into the recruiting it's so fantastic looking and right off the bat we have some guys that we need to scout eight of them we've got a visit that we can schedule so go ahead and go through all of this uh these guys that we added again i'm not entirely certain if they'll be uh available for us to pick up but it's worth a look um actually you know what before we waste our point scouting let's just make sure it looks like they're going to be able to be picked up. And yeah, every single one of these guys we will have a chance with. So how is the scouting going to go? Terrence Palmer is a 77 overall gem of a center. That could be a massive pickup. Uh, hit from California. Justin Williams, another center. He's a 78 overall gem. Back to back. And apparently the recruiting gods are on our side today. He's from Ohio. Michael Fogel goes up to 66 overall at the athlete spot. Uh, what does he look like? Got good block shedding, maybe a linebacker or some sort of defensive back, like a safety. But uh, I like that. Roy Jones, the defensive end, goes up to 78 overall. This is a four star, the number five defensive end in the country, also from California. Calvin Morris goes up to 77. Dude, these guys are good so far. Uh, Paul Burke goes down to 69, uh, but even still, a 69 overall guard for us would be massive. Joe Carey, not able to carry the team. He drops down to that 69 overall as well. Another athlete. Uh, what does he look like? Maybe a running back? Or potentially, like, maybe, let's see. Could he be it? Maybe a tight end? We'll see. We'll see if we can pick him up. Uh, he could maybe fit a couple spots. And the last guy that we need to scout... We actually don't have the points for, so Desmond Douglas is going to sit on the sideline for now uh, on the scouting as we're going to go through all of our players on the board and just make sure that we are looking okay. And I, every time I go into a menu that I haven't seen before in this update, it is so incredible. I love it. Hats off to the CFB uh, revamped squad because they are incredible. They've done such a good job with this. But we are going to go ahead and do the, the normal move where I kind of just allocate uh, points, you know, take them away from guys that don't need them and uh, give them to some guys that do. Maybe take a couple guys off the board and uh, we'll jump back when we uh, are done with that. All right. So I've gone ahead and freed up uh, almost 2000 points so we can use 50 to scout Desmond here. He is a bust, but only a 67 overall bust, so not the worst defensive tackle that we'll ever see. Uh, he's not going to come off the board just yet. And then uh, let's go ahead and do our scholarship offers for guys that we are leading with. You know, always want to try to see if we can get guys committing. Dave Burke will be the first. Uh, you know, maybe kind of mediocre 62 overall wide receiver. Uh, he's from Delaware, six foot. Uh, yeah, we'll give it to him. Always, again, wanting to fill our uh, our class with all 25 players no matter what. Because even if he's bad, he could still be better than somebody else that we would have otherwise had on the team. Um, there's a couple other guys. Wendell Whitlock is a 65 overall defensive tackle from Miramar, Florida. 6'4", 321 pounds. Uh, he'll get his offer. Bryant McIntyre, the kicker. He's not the best kicker we've ever seen, but he's going to get the scholarship offer. So will Paul Burke. He's a Juco guard at 69 overall. Not the best again that we've seen, but 
getting that scholarship offer. And again, also just using these scholarships early allows us to not have to worry about freeing up those points a little bit later in the season when maybe they're a little bit more uh, um, useful to us. Alex Moore, the six foot free safety from South Carolina. What is his overall? He's at a 68. That is definitely worth a scholarship from us at this point. Uh, we've got Jason Robinson, the six foot wide receiver, 89 speed, 83 acceleration. Not bad at 67 overall. And our last scholarship offer of the week will go to Curtis Kent, the running back from Florida. He's a speed back, 94 speed, 83 acceleration. So slow to get up to his uh, top speed, but a very good top speed nonetheless. He's going to get that scholarship, and then we're just going to go straight down to the bottom of the board to offer some or, or to give some points to players. Um, these are some incredible guys that we found, but I want to make sure that we're giving them to the guys that matter the most right off the bat. Terrence Palmer and Justin Williams, the two centers. If we get these two guys, the rest of the class doesn't matter to me. Uh, there's some incredible moves. We might also just go hard on uh, Roy Jones there and maybe Calvin Morris as well because um, what we've seen with these talents is, is pretty impeccable. Um, let's see, let's see. Losing 480, we definitely give the full 500 to Terrence. He's going to be the hardest one for us to pull in. Justin Williams, we're going to give him 450 this week so that we can give a little bit more to Roy Jones, who will give, uh, let's do 225, and then we will give Calvin Morris 225, or 125 as well. I can do math. <laughs> 33 guys on the board. I'll eventually add one here, uh, but we won't scout them until next episode and our last bit of recruiting. We'll set up Nick Cannon's visit. <laughs> Oh, that's a, such a great name. We want this to be a uh, good home game. And how competitive are we looking with him? We are down to Wake Forest. And they are slowly pulling away from us. But not a crazy amount. So we're going to set up the visit. But we're going to do it as late in the season as we can. Week 13 in South Alabama. And there's our first visit scheduled. And uh, we're actually just going to go ahead and jump into the game. Now, again, we're playing Auburn. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about it. A, A, A minus for their ratings. And A, it's not. <laughs> that's hilarious. The pick is no longer Kirk Herbstreet, but it is now Lee Corso. And Lee Corso is going to be pulling for Auburn in this game. They have every category locked down except for their or, or the the rush defense where they're number seven in the country and we're number five so it's three yards separating that uh from from them dominating us and again we are just just worried uh they they won their two games pretty handily against teams that they should be able to beat but conference opponents so can we uh can we come in and get this one done we wore the all whites last game feels a little bit weird to uh wear the same thing two games in a row so we'll go uh black white and teal and auburn being auburn we'll just have them wear their standard homes you can see they've got the uh the gloves there as well and uh, we'll see what we can do against the number 10 team in the country 95 overall on offense or their overall and their offense with a 93 defense and we still have Reese White, our starting running back, out for this week, uh, injured with back spasms. Boy, I love this new loading screen as well. Uh, shows off a big player and then gets into the, the upgraded graphics package where we can see their top players in that 90s. Not too crazy, but we imagine that maybe their lower end of the team is way higher than ours because our best players are that low 90 as well. Both highly and likely are on hot streaks which is useful but again no reese white and with me maybe needing to run more in these big games that could be pretty devastating it is a rainy day here at jordan hare stadium uh we go into our second tiger matchup in a row we're gonna go with tails in this beautiful new espn uh presentation losing the toss we're going to start with the football and gosh, the scoreboard is so fantastic. Digs back to return with the new font and everything. We're bringing this out of the end zone. And ooh, he might have the corner. Digs in a big game here against Auburn. Gets us to the 40-yard line to start our drive. Even 
the play art in the playbook when we're choosing stuff has changed, which is incredible. We're going to open this up with a halfback dive. We can see the menus are all changed when you're hot routing and whatnot. Um, this is fantastic. Halfback dive up the middle to, uh, what is it? Ben, ben, ben Baden Pinson. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Baden. Couldn't remember the first name there. And so uh, we get a yard there. On second and nine. We're going to step back and pass. McCall outside of the pocket. I'm going to be patient here. We find Dion Fountain, who picks up almost another little block there, but still gets 26 yards on the play, man. That could have been a whole lot more, but that's a massive gain for us, and we are in Auburn territory. Another first down means another run for Pinson, and he's got nowhere to go. The Tigers' D just uh, shutting down the run so far. Second and 12. It is important for us to remember that this Auburn defense has the number seven rush D in the country, but can they stop the pass? The screen to Pinson. It's a uh, four yards back there, but still a third and long. Grayson McCall, two of two on this drive. As we will be looking for Javon Hiley on the or on the big pass here. Or this is a terrible throw. We're going to just lob it up. I thought that I had Isaiah a little bit more open, but then everybody just started to converge on him. So fourth and eight now. And as foolish as it may seem in a game that's going to be difficult for us, uh, we're going to kick the field goal. New kicking graphic as well. I'm going to blame that if we miss this and ooh, just barely sneaking it inside the right upright. We pick up the uh, field goal and uh, Oregon State upsets number six USC. The giant killers down in Corvallis are back. Jamar Jefferson, 270 yards on the game. That's incredible. Oh, look at how beautiful the play calling thing is on defense. Maybe a problem with the pick a play. Not fitting properly. Oh, I'm running out of time. We'll just run a cover three here and uh, see what we can do here against, uh, what is this, Tank Bigby and Bo Nix in the backfield. They step back to pass their first timeout. They find the running back who breaks a tackle, and Tank is, well, living up to his name there with a 16-yard reception. It's always going to be disappointing, but again, this is a game where we're just looking for some sort of stop. They're going to go with the option here. We were ready for it. Can we get to Bo Nix? No, just a miss. He cuts it back up and picks up eight yards. Second and two. I'm bringing the pressure up the middle. We can't get there in time. Tank's got the first down in their cross midfield. And it's time for us now to get back into our, uh, you know, method of bringing more and more pressure as the game goes on because obviously oh my gosh if we don't bring pressure we're in trouble but if we do we're still in trouble three broken tackles and dj williams takes it 45 yards to the house for an auburn touchdown seven three just like that what a uh what an effort from the man right there oh my goodness all right well that puts Diggs back to return again the last ball was returnable this one looks like it could be as well. Maybe the rain starts to help us at some point, and this is not going to be a great return. But we got to give it a chance, especially after getting to the 40 the first time out. Maybe a questionable decision here, but we're going to open up this drive with a little play-action pass. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure. There's nobody open. Taking the sack, it's a loss of 10, and I sh maybe should have just thrown that one away. Inside our own 15 now. Let's see what we can do. McCall back to throw. We've got Bedgood who broke the tackle and got us back to the original line of scrimmage. And so we will go for this uh, through the air on third and ten. I see it right over the middle. It's Bedgood and we just missed him. Grayson in clutch situations continues to miss his receivers. And we will be forced to punt this one away again. And Oh no, he's going to get under it, but he muffs it. McReary picks it up and gets a beautiful block right around the corner. So they're at the 35 to start their second drive. That's that's kind of devastating. The start of this game is starting to feel like uh, how I expected the Clemson game to go. Just us getting destroyed and hey, at least we have a little bit of decent user there to only give up a yard. We'll go ahead and Blitz Gunter here as they hand off towards the edge. Shelton needs to get there. Able to slow him down enough for Alex Spillum, the safety, to come up and make the stop. 
And it's going to be a safety blitz here on third and three. They're going back to pass. Bo Nix hit in the pocket and then finally gets taken down by Bo Martz. A sack for a loss of two. Fourth and six. It looks like we might have held them to a field goal. I thought he was going to break free there. Very lucky. Field goal kick is up and oh, he missed it. Pushed it just right of the upright and uh, the defense held. It is still a one score game here at Jordan Hare and uh, with our offense back on the field, maybe we can take the lead or maybe get it within a point. Good four yard rush there on first down. Second and six time, we'll try the counter and Pinson getting some surprisingly good blocks there. Gets six and uh, stopped just shy of the first down. On third and inches, we're going to run the option. And McCall has it a first down <laughs> with a risky pitch back to Baden. And, uh, you know, he's able to hold on to it. Not a whole lot to say about that last play. <laughs> Other than it was enough to get the first down. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. We'll step back to pass and get the quick throw to Bedgood on uh, first down for seven yards. And Bedgood has... Well, turned into a pretty important receiver for this squad so far this season as Pinson's going to uh, take the carry for another first down. So the running game might have started a bit slow, but seems like maybe it's picking up a little bit. I'm going to cut this back. Oh, we ran into the lineman and Pinson got obliterated there. So that brings us to the end of the first quarter. You know, only down four points, and I think that we could do better. Defense has done enough getting a stop after uh, Auburn started a great field position on their second drive. And now to start this second quarter, it is second and 12, but we are across midfield as well. McCall just, uh, well, didn't have anywhere to go there, and maybe we're not across midfield anymore. We'll see if we can find a man open deep here. I'm throwing it up. Mobley gets to it. He holds on to it. It's fourth than two. We're going for this 100%. I see, I see no reason not to go for this. They're going to bring pressure. So we know the blitz is coming. Can the pass be there? Bedgood is open. And he's got the catch just outside the red zone. Grayson McCall now six of eight on the day. As we're going to hand this one off to Pinson out kind of towards the edge. He's got decent blocking, but not enough speed to reach the corner. On second and eight, we're going to bring out the option. McCall's going to keep this one. And again, their option defense is just too staggering. It's now third and ten. It's going to be difficult to pick this one up, but maybe we have it. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and ten, and I think that we're going to kick the field goal again. All things considered, this makes it a one-point game. So I feel comfortable putting it there. And look at that. Not only has number six or number five USC lost, but number two Florida loses to an unranked Tennessee. First and ten here for Auburn. As we've seen our second uh, unranked team beat a top ten opponent, maybe we can join that list. It's going to take a whole lot of luck for that to happen, though. And on second and three, this is a handoff. We're there to meet Tank Bigsby in the backfield, but he just bounces off of us, gets the stiff arm cheese, and picks up the first down. That was against a defensive end that he just bounced off as well, so not sure really what we're going to be able to do as he cuts up field for 14 more there. This is not going great so far on this drive. We'll oh, get dusted by the little misdirection, and there's another first down for him. Even while bringing pressure, they seem to be able to do a lot, and we brought a lot of pressure, brought the safeties on the blitz, and just like that, it's a first and goal. We can expect this one to go to, go to Tank, who has the edge and bounces off a tackler into the end zone. This man cannot be tackled right now. So we need to answer with a touchdown now. 14-6. to six. Diggs is not bringing this one out of the end zone. We had some decent running going at some point on the last drive, but it has been absolutely eliminated. They are slaughtering us right now. So many tackles for loss. 
We'll throw the curl route here. There's Javon Hiley into triple coverage, and we almost get the first down. We'll see if we can run this up the middle, and I'm really hoping we can pick up just enough for the first down. And yeah, Pinson got it. Keep this drive going. Again, we'll step up to pass this one to Fountain, who holds on with through some big contact. That puts us back across midfield. We've been hitting him with these short routes pretty well. We're going to continue it. There's Javon Hiley. He takes a shot, but gets a quick four yards. Now we'll see if maybe we've suckered him into something here. We're going to throw up a ball. Bedgood got past his man, and he's inside the 10, 34 yards for a first and goal. The safety just kind of expected him to uh, curl deep on that route, but he just kept running, and we found him on the fade. The question now is what can we do to find the end zone? We'll run it now on first down with a minute and a half to go in the half. We pick up a big three yards. That run puts us at the three. And we're actually going to burn a little bit of clock here because the last thing I need is for Auburn to go and march down the field and score another touchdown right before the half. So we'll let the clock tick out. I feel relatively comfortable with this run, at least getting a positive yard. And with 55 seconds, Pinson is tackled just shy of the goal line, which is actually perfect for us. Third and goal, we can burn more clock. Down eight with 20 seconds to go in the half. Grayson McCall on the quarterback sneak is in. And now we just need the two-point conversion to tie this one up. Sending highly in motion. We're five wide. Going to throw or scramble on this one. And we just take the sack. I had no time to get that one off. We had guys open in the end zone, but I just couldn't do anything. With 15 seconds now left in the half, we just got to make sure that they don't score. And oh my gosh, it's a massive run from Tank. They are looking for a field goal now. This is exactly what we didn't want to happen. As another first down will be enough, but they go with the slip screen. Can we get their Porter diving? Gets Tank. They take their second timeout with five seconds to go. And it looks like they're about to throw up the Hail Mary on this play. No uh, field goal formation out. Yep, there they all are running. Can we defend this? The dropped pick. Oh my gosh, their receivers were so far away. Maybe there would have been a chance. Bo Nix's first incompletion is on the Hail Mary as we go into the locker rooms down two here at Jordan Hare Stadium against the number 10 Auburn. And to come out and start this second half, the third quarter, Massimo Biscardi will boot this one probably uh, yeah, deep into the end zone. Not going to be a returnable ball, and we'll see if the defense can do a decent job here to open up this second half. Expecting a run on this first down. They're going to hand it off. It is kind of the counter, and Porter's there to stop him. It's a loss of three for Bigsby. That was a great first down. Now with that stop, we can expect them to go to the air. Schwartz in motion, though, is going to be Bonix keeping the ball. And oh, he took an absolute shot, but still picked up seven yards. This gives us a big third and five. They're going with the screen. We're there with Clark. <laughs> the defensive lineman dropped the pick, but it is a stop. And it sends Diggs deep to return. Oh, how big would it have been to get the fat man? Touchdown uh, on the pick six. Oh, regardless, this punt is pretty deep, but it looks like it's going to be very returnable for Diggs, who picks up some blocks and gets the corner. He's not going to have the speed to outrun everybody, but he still gets us across midfield. 24 yards on the punt return is very good. Down two on this drive. A chance to take the lead against Auburn on the road. And it's a good four-yard rush from Baden Pinson to open up the drive. Second and six. I would not be upset if we had to settle for another field goal on this one. Is I'm just going to take off running. McCall has the first down on the ground, sliding to say save. That's fantastic. Let's see what the counter has in store for us. I don't like that safety moving, but the blocking is still there enough for Pinson to get forward. But man, that closed down quick. Only two yards on the play. Trying the read option here. It's going to be a handoff to Pinson who gets tackled from behind but still picks him four and has us in a third and manageable 
We're going to look for the safe throw, and there it is to Javon Hiley. Those short little curls that we've been using so far in this game have worked very well. It's our fourth and third down conversion of the game. Grayson McCall is 11 of 14, and you know now that we're in field goal range, we're going to try to avoid passing. Maybe opening up the weird running. Uh, you know, we go jet sweep here for three yards, but the last thing I needed is to throw a pick. I can admit that I am definitely worried about uh, not scoring any points on this drive. So if we have to settle for the field goal, I will absolutely take it. At the 16-yard line, third and three, we're running a halfback dive. This is dangerous. I'm actually, can we bring, is this likely? No, we can't switch to the tight end. So it's a run up the middle and, oh, bad little cut from me. We only get a yard, fourth and two. We're kicking this field goal. I understand how big it would be to score a touchdown here, but I also know that we got to make sure that we're scoring points on every drive, and that gives us a one-point lead. 2.15 left in the third. Uh, I mean, if we trade scores, we're still in this. The defense did incredible the last time out. We'll see if they can continue that, bringing a big blitz here on first down. Nix has a man wide open. He hits him, and that's a quick 20 yards to Cedric Jackson. Shedrick Jackson. Oh, my goodness. It was an absolute struggle to get that name out. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister for me. This one's a handoff to Tank, and we get a good stop. Only giving up three yards. On second and seven, Williams comes in motion. Bo has been keeping these. They hand this one off up the middle to Tank, and he gets four yards, but it is third down now. And we're going to bring a massive blitz here. It is a handoff up the middle. Tank gets the gap, and he gets 11 yards there. I chose the wrong hole as the safety, and it didn't work. Just got to continue to bring this pressure on this first down. Expecting another handoff, and there it is. This time, Gunter comes up and makes a big stop. That was fantastic. Tight end goes in motion here. We're bringing the blitz with Gunter. Nick's plenty of time to throw. Finds his man. Porter can't bring him down. Bush can't bring him down either. But he doesn't get him to stumble. Unfortunately, he picks up the first down as he's falling forward. First and 10 now. They're approaching the red zone. This is going to be a handoff. We're there to stop him, though. That's going to be a loss of a yard for Tank. So we're starting to do decent on some of the run defense, but uh, just not consistently enough. Second 11. I'm expecting the pass. They hand this one out towards the edge. Bomber slows him down. And Tank Bigsby loses two more yards. We have them in a third and 13. Could we hold him to a field goal? This could be a mistake, but we're only going to rush four on the play. Drop a bunch of guys into coverage, and there's the sack. Bo Nix loses seven yards. The coverage holds. It's fourth and 21. I think that's going to be the end of the third quarter as well. Um, we're up. They're about to kick a field goal to maybe take the lead, but we'll get the ball to start the fourth quarter. Can we do something with it? Will the game ever just show me... That we're end of, at the end of the quarter. There it is. <laughs> Goodness. Kind of, we got to see all of that replay. I'm glad that it was at least a good play for us. Let's hope they miss this field goal. Clutch skill active for Auburn here in the fourth quarter. I'm going to be trying to bring some pressure because we can give up the, uh, the penalty. But no, bad timing from me. This cook is good. And we're back down to 557 left in the game. Diggs again back deep to return. This will not be a returnable ball. I'm not going to risk it. And uh, this is going to be an interesting drive. Down two. You know, a field goal puts us back in the lead, but the defense would have to hold. And I don't think we can hold the ball for 557, but we might as well try. Baden Pinson gets just back to the line of scrimmage on the first down. We're going to go back to the curls on this second and 10. And Javon... <laughs> Doesn't curl as soon as I was hoping, so now it's third and ten just like that. On third and ten, we got to go to the air here. Is it going to be open for us? Or can we scramble? Grayson McCall got a little bit of space. Avoided the sack just narrowly and picks up 14 yards to keep the drive alive. That one was scary. And this time we're going to go with the plunge to Pinson, who only picks up a yard. But at least it's better than getting back to the line of scrimmage. We'll continue to try to pass as best as we can. And a risky throw. Oh, it's likely in the hands, but he can't hold on to it. 
We've got another third and long year to try to convert. Can we do it? The curl. Fountain holds on to it. Oh my gosh, I threw that ball a little bit late, but the receiver is doing a good enough job so far. A touchdown on this drive might be enough, but almost more importantly, we just got to continue to burn this clock as much as possible. Four and a half minutes left. We're going to go with the counter to Pinson. And hopefully this works pretty well. Burning, burning, burning the clock. Keeping the defense out on the field. There's some blocking for Pinson. He picks up another one. That's a lot of space. Pinson, his biggest run of the game. I think he might have gone out of bounds, but the clock should move after they set it. 418. And another first down inside Auburn territory. We're going to give it to the backup once again here as we will tick below four minutes left in the game we've taken two minutes on this drive it's not nearly enough but you never know it could help us there's a bit of a gap there for him he's still on his feet he got nine yards there so we get a 79 on the day on the ground here on second and inches we're going to run him right up the middle again the blocking has been great so far on this drive it almost seems intentional from auburn trying to get the ball back but Unfortunately for the Tigers, the clock just kind of keeps tick, tick, ticking away as we've got them now at 2.50 left in the game. McCall <laughs> had some space, but the line doesn't hold their blocks long enough. Second and 13 after the big loss. And we will go to the air looking for something. Let's just go for the safe throw to Isaiah Likely, who bowls over the first man. It's tackled. There's a flag on the play, though. And of course, it's a holding. Oh, how devastating on the time. Dion Fountain gets called for it. It'll be second and 16. Honestly, not that bad. We only lost three yards. And that's just due to the fact that uh, the block was a little, or the hold was further downfield. Does allow us to burn this clock now under two minutes. And we will throw it again here on second and 16. Going across the middle, we have Javon Hiley, who gets us back to a third and 11. And I'm going to get risky with this. We're going to do an AI type of move. Throwing the halfback slip screen because I don't want to throw a pick. And it does give us some sort of chance. But they're kind of following Pinson who's not going to be able to get it. And there's Auburn's first time out taken with a minute and four to go in this game. It's going to be another close one. Uh, can we hit this field goal? And now can the defense hold? Oh my gosh, I am just barely squeezing those in, but it's a one-point lead with a minute and two remaining. Biscardi is placing this ball in a returnable position. I'm doing this just so hopefully they burn a few seconds off the clock. We just need to get a decent stop, and that works perfectly. We burned four seconds off the clock and didn't really get them any further than if they took a touchback. It is now entirely up to the defense. Uh, less than a minute to go. Oh, I thought maybe we could pick that ball off, but we do tackle them and bounce. So the clock will be ticking. However, a field goal wins this game for Auburn. Just need to make sure that we're tackling them inbounds and before the first down marker. Uh, second and two, we're actually going to hop on Sidney McRae. He's had kind of a quiet game, and I think Auburn might be broken. They're not snapping the ball. The clock is just running away. Uh, 25 seconds left in the game. This seems like maybe something's broken. We'll see if they get the snap off or if they somehow take a delay a game. But this is useful because now I can jump the snap. And maybe McCray can get pressure on Nix. We do that. He finds a man and we break it up. There's a flag though. Is this going to be a roughing the passer? Clipping. Oh my goodness. With 10 seconds to go, it's going to make it a second and 17. They got to throw a Hail Mary just to get in the field goal range. I'm surprised to see a clipping call there. We're going into the uh, prevent here because this is likely their last play, or maybe they have one more, but they're not going to pick up enough for the field position, I imagine, unless I absolutely screw this up, knocking him out of bounds at the three, or with three seconds to go at midfield. This is going to be a Hail Mary for Auburn to try and avoid the upset. Number 10, Tigers at home. Oh no, could they lose to an unranked Coastal? We've got the prevent out again. We know where the Hail Mary is going, and I'm bringing Sidney McRae into the pass coverage as well, just as an extra body to make sure that uh, we have as many guys there as possible. This is a tremendously underthrown ball, and they catch it. Anthony Schwartz brought it down, but the clock reads triple zeros, which means... 
That's game over. Coastal Carolina with the massive upset over number 10 Auburn on the road. Oh my gosh, we came so close to taking out Clemson. We were able to take out Auburn. Oh my gosh, and how about, uh, what, Massimo Biscardi? Yeah, player of the game, four for four on his field goals. Ooh, my goodness, one point, and we get it done. Teams around the country, gosh, this screen is so fantastic. I love how this looks. Uh, Washington is able to beat Georgia State, so that's the only other ranked matchup here. We can see App State destroying Fresno, but... Uh, ULL, the Raging Cajuns, uh, lose to Boise State. That's kind of interesting, but how about our game? Uh, one more first down, one more point. Uh, pretty close in terms of rushing yards. We held Auburn to 91 on the ground. They beat us in passing yards, 221 to 165. Unsurprisingly, no turnovers for either side, which is massive. But how about this? 17 minutes on the time of possession. Uh, that last drive was massive. We just chewed the clock up and the clipping uh, on the final drive for Auburn really was the nail in the coffin for them. We know uh, Massimo Biscardi was our offensive player of the game. On defense, it's Devon Bomar. Two tackles, a tackle for a loss and a sack for the right end. Uh, Tank Bigsby, 14 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown. Some catches as well, but... Uh, just couldn't get it going enough. Kept him under 100 yards, and uh, Bo Nix not able to get it done enough through the air. Means that uh, we win this one, and not only do we get the win, but uh, Reese White will come back next week for our next game. It's a shame that somehow we couldn't have visits for that, because that's a massive win. We moved to 3-1 on this season. Guaranteed three top 10 teams lost uh, on this week as we will now sim to our week five where we play Troy. Three recruits are ready to visit after that. Frank Bryant, uh, 67 overall outside linebacker. Tom West, a 67 overall free safety. And Bryant McIntyre, our kicker prospect. Uh, that's good news. We get a bunch of XP for that. And we are ranked number 24 in the nation are your Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Uh, we do come up against the 3-0 Troy, but it's not Herb Street in our favor now. It's Lee Corso saying that we're going to win this. Uh, this looks like it could be a pretty close matchup. Troy, 3-0. Who have they beat? Um, UAB in, a, in an easy win. They did enough against their FCS team and did a decent enough job against Georgia Southern, but we are definitely their first real test, first team with a winning opponent and the only ranked team. <laughs> I love that we can say that now on their schedule. Uh, Auburn dropped to 16. Clemson is up at six. And again, we only lost to Clemson by a touchdown. So we could be the real deal this year. We'll take a quick look here at uh, the top 25 poll for the week just to see uh, if anything else crazy happened. Florida ended up losing to Tennessee. We remember that. Ohio State lost to Minnesota, so that's two top 10 teams. We know that uh, USC lost to Oregon State, who jumps up into the rankings. It's probably been a while for the Beavers. Uh, Texas A&M lost to South Carolina. They were 11th. 10 Auburn lost to us. That's that's a lot of names uh, taken L's. And Oklahoma State lost to TCU. They were 14th. Uh, Cal, Wisconsin, and Northwestern also taking losses. But how about that? 24. Uh, that's a that's a beautiful rank for an 81 overall team. And oh goodness, apparently the Beavers are 20 or, or at 23rd with a 90 overall, two and one for Oregon State. Pretty impressive. Our Heisman watch changes just a little bit, but uh, man, the man who hurt me so much this past weekend, Brees Hall, uh, who did a number to my ducks in the Fiesta Bowl, is leading the uh, Heisman watch here as a junior. You got Zamir White from Georgia in second, Don Chaney Jr., the running back from Miami in third, Jarrett uh, Doge, D Doge? I, don't, I don't know how to say it. The, the redshirt senior quarterback at West Virginia sitting in fourth and Malik Davis from Florida there in fifth. Uh, an interesting bunch of guys. I got to say, it's going to be a while until somebody from our uh, team manages to crack this top five. 
So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. And <laughs> what a good one. Not only do we come in with the new graphics package, but we get a massive top 10 upset against Auburn. We couldn't do it against the first Tiger team that we played. We did it against the second. And now we are poised to have a fantastic rest of the season, especially with our starting running back coming back from injury. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this. That was, that was a fun game to play. And this... Uh, graphics update it makes it so awesome i'm like i'm so giddy <laughs> it's such a lame word to use but it's true uh so happy that they were able to get this done and and now i'm so excited to see them you know do the big 10 do the back 12 and then finish the g5 and i think that there's probably going to be more that they try to uh add so uh, i just uh, every time they update it i'm blown away once again so again kudos to the college football revamped mod team uh, those guys are working miracles. As for you guys, kudos to you. Uh, the last episode I recorded not too long ago, I was like, hey guys, that's awesome. We just broke the 400 sub mark. We're almost at 450, just like that. Um, so that's awesome. Thanks for the support. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to, to hit the like button because that helps. And if you're not part of the, at the time of recording, 442 uh, you know, strong that are subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button because again, it's free to do it now and it'll be free to unsubscribe in the future if you stop enjoying the content, which won't ever happen. There's also our Twitter that you can follow and our Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Both of those links are in the description below, as is the link to our community Discord. Feel free to jump in there, pressing buttons on the controller. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. It means a ton. And my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.